Greetings, CAD nerds. Evan Alexander here with another Vectorworks Quick Tip tutorial. It's been a while. It's been about two years since my last tutorial. It's 2022 now. I thought I should start making them again. So we're going to start with some small bite-sized chunks just to get us uh, in the mood. Maybe some bigger tutorials will come. Maybe you'll never hear from me again. Who knows? Here we go. Today we're going to talk about revolve with rail. I had to make a domed ceiling the other day that was not round and symmetrical and something I was able to sweep. And I thought this would be a perfect short tutorial. Let's jump right in. I'm in Vectorworks 2022. I'm in top plan view here. And uh, I'm going to start by just drawing out an oval. So let's get this laid in here. We'll make it 20 feet wide. How about we make it 12 feet tall? And then I'm just going to zero this out so it's in the center of our world. Always good practice. And here we go. So if imagine we're trying to make this kind of domed ceiling this way. Um, so here's what we're going to do. This is the footprint of it in plan view. Now I'm going to switch over to front view. Here, I just hit the two on my number pad, but you can come up here and pick front view. And now I'm gonna draw what's, what's called the axes. So this is gonna be kind of the revolve point. So this'll be where, uh, where we're gonna swing around. And it's also gonna kind of define the height of, uh, of our line here. So why don't we go to six feet here? I'm making this up as we go, but you can see now we have this six foot line centered in the middle of our, uh, well, this is gonna be called the rail here. So let's go back to front view. Now we need to draw our profile. So kind of what is the shape of this dome? Is it a nice smooth arc? Does it have some kind of shapes and forms to it? I'm gonna grab the polyline tool, my favorite tool. There's another tutorial on the polyline tool. Uh, check it out if you haven't watched it yet. And let's just lay in here. We'll do something weird. I don't know what kind of architecture this is, but uh, it'll show, I think it's gonna show what we're trying to do here a little bit better. So, all right. So imagine now this is our profile. There we go. We're making a squished Liberty Bell here apparently. So here it is. Uh, I'm going to turn off the fill on this. It doesn't really matter, uh, but I just think it's easier and cleaner to see now. Now, if for some reason you had drawn this and it was kind of just floating in space, I do think it's worth getting it kind of snapped back uh, into alignment here. So we've got our rail, we've got our axes, and then we have our profile. And so now... Uh, right, so this is the beauty. If we were sweeping, this would be the same diameter all the way around. But now Vectorworks is going to magically follow this and kind of stretch and squash uh, as we need it uh, to make it kind of work. So how do we do it? doesn't really matter what view we're in. We'll stay here in a nice left isometric. We're going to go to the model menu, to the 3D power pack, and we're looking for revolve with rail. Now, depending on which version of Vectorworks you're using, this may be in a slightly different spot. I'm using Spotlight. If you have fundamentals, this menu may not even exist. I'm not sure. Apologies in advance if that's the case. But you're looking for revolve with rail inside the 3D power pack. And I'm going to choose the command. And so we're getting prompted up here. It's, it's a, like a three-step process, and this is going to walk us through it. So revolve with rail. Select an axis, a linear object first. Well, that's this guy. So I'm just going to click on it once, and it'll highlight red. Then select a profile curve. Well, that's this little bell shape here. So we're going to click on that. And then finally, the rail. And the minute I click on this, boom, there you go. I'm going to switch over to shaded view here so we can see this. And now you can see we've made this kind of profile. Now, a few things worth noting here, okay? Uh, by the way, this has now become a NURBS surface. So 
if you're experimenting, you may want to duplicate your uh, components before you run this command because it's going to eat them up. So our only way back now is to undo. But it, it looks kind of chunky here and kind of faceted, right? And, and this is not a geometry problem. This is a problem with shaded view. Or if you're using an earlier version, it's uh, what we call OpenGL. So this is probably set to low. I'm going to come up here to the teapot. I'm going to come down to my shaded options. I'm in shaded mode, which is the only way to make the shaded options appear. Thank you, Vectorworks. And you'll see, yes, our detail is in fact set to low. And if we bump this up to high, you can see right here, all of a sudden things are looking much smoother. So that's great. And that looks really nice. We're close here. Uh, but the last thing I want to do is just give this some thickness because right now, this is just like a polygon. It's, uh, you know, it's a shell with no actual kind of thickness to it. And so to do this, we're going to go to the 3D modeling tab, and I'm going to choose the shell solid tool here. Um, and so you have to dial in your settings. I'm going to click on the little wrench here. You can choose whether you want to kind of add thickness to the inside or add thickness to the outside of this. It just depends on how you built it. And then also what you want the thickness to be. I'm going to go with a ridiculously thick number of a foot here just so you can really see it. Uh, but let's say, okay, we're going to select our object here. Just click on it. And then we have to hit the green checkbox. Boop. And there you go. Now we've added thickness to this. This has now become a shell object. Um, but this is a great way. I use this for like, uh, you know, anything kind of dome-like. Uh, I've used this for tents. Like if you're working on those kind of hexagonal pop-up event tents, those are, are great. Um, and then the last thing that's, uh, you know, kind of worth noting is that your, your rail does not need to be a complete shape, uh, uh, sorry, a closed shape. So imagine uh, you're working on, I don't know, some kind of, uh, well, you know, recently I was building Carnegie Hall and it has this kind of domed back wall here. So imagine that this was our, our shape here. I'm going to come in and, uh, well, my, my fillet radius is set extremely low for this scale. Let's bump this up here. 24 inches. All right. So we can use this as our rail, kind of sloppy, but <clears throat> you get the idea. And then same thing. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to draw in our axes. And then now I'm going to use snapping here to help us out. So I'm going to kind of snap, hold it there. I'm going to find the midpoint, kind of hold it there. I'm going to let this kind of guide me in here. There we go. Let's see if this works off-centered like this. This might be the point where I screw up the entire tutorial. Five key, we're going to come in and we'll just build some kind of weird profile like this. Isn't that great? Let's turn off the fill on this. Not necessary, but I like to do it. So nothing's touching. It looks weird, but let's see what happens here. This isn't touching. I'm not sure if this is even going to work. Let's try it out. This is how you learn, people. Model 3D Power Pack, Evolve with Rail. I'm going to pick my axes. I'm going to pick my profile. And then I'm going to pick my rail. Oh, look at that. It worked. Cool. So there you go. Uh, that would be the old command. We're in the new command. Uh, pretty nice. I wish this was a little more parametric. Um, it's become a NURB surface. So... Once you run the command, you're kind of stuck with it. Uh, you know, if you want to edit these points to refine your shape, you can. Uh, I would probably undo and refine my shape here and, uh, and then go back and run the command again here. So maybe we make this more kind of like we had before. Pull this in. Making this up as we go here. But, you know, modified shape. And then, all right, last time, let's do it. Model, 3D power pack, revolve with rail, axes, profile, rail. There you go. You're making 3D. Thanks, everybody. See you soon.